Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar from the Agile webinar series. Today, we're very excited to have Hyper SKU joining us, and we will be discussing two topics. First, Mati Ram, the CEO of AdScale, will be uh, presenting a, a brief discussion on using AI and first-party data to overcome the loss of the cookie in recent years and how we can utilize that in order to improve our Q4 advertising performance on Google and Facebook. We also have Sean from HyperSVU joining us, and he will be discussing sourcing and fulfillment, particularly during this time of year, making sure that you stay, uh, you have the right amount of stock, not too much, not too little, and that things get delivered on time. It should be exciting, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I hope that you are too. Uh, a little bit by way of housekeeping. My name is Jonathan Maltz. I'm the head of marketing here at AdScale. And uh, we spoke a little bit about what today's session will entail. At the end, there will be a Q&A. So feel free to ask any questions in your Zoom uh, Q&A window. And at the end, we'll hear from uh, both of our speakers on their thoughts about your questions. Uh, so Mati, if you're ready, uh, feel free to activate your video and audio and uh, share your screen. I'll stop sharing mine right now. I'm ready. Thank you, Jonathan. Hi, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you. My name is Mati Ram. I'm the uh, CEO of AdScale. And I'll talk today about the uh, ability, our way to enjoy the uh, AI technology and leverage that into better advertising and more sales. And the uh, theme of my presentation is don't, don't be late to the party because I think that uh, just like every other technology, every other new technology, some people adopt it and thrive and some people uh, reject it and usually it doesn't end well. So I think it's important to realize what the AI technology can, can bring to uh, to, uh, to the e-commerce space, and specifically I'll discuss today the, uh, the um, AI advertising space. But uh, we'll start at the start. And uh, I think that what we are seeing is that most of advertisers are experiencing a substantial decrease in ad performance ever since March 2021, when uh, iOS 14 was launched. And the main reason for the decrease is the uh, death of the third party cookie. Basically, ever since the internet was invented, the, the third party cookie served to track user behavior. Uh, Google and Facebook used it extensively in order to uh, make advertising more personalized. I think that uh, the fact that most of the advertising budgets shifted from print and TV and radio into digital is mainly thanks to the cookie and to the ability to uh, serve personalized ads. But with the uh, latest regulations and with the fact that uh, the cookie is banned from uh, Firefox and from Safari and uh, Facebook is not sharing the data anymore unless you give a consent and Google declared that they are gonna ban the third party cookie from Chrome, the situation is totally different and we are approaching an era where Google and Facebook are having less data, less accurate data with less capabilities to match it with the, with the persons. So it's more generic data. And that is the main reason why we see decrease in ad performance and we will continue seeing decrease in ad performance unless we will change something in the equation. And that forces us to think out of the box, or if I may, out of the cookie box. And the question is, what will make the results great again? And we believe that the uh, answer for that is a combination of first-party data as opposed to the third-party cookie and AI. So uh, what is first-party data? First party data refers to all the data that we collect from our customers' orders. So customers are coming to our website, making purchases, 
and those purchases are generating <clears throat> enormous amount of data. We can learn from that uh, about the average order value. We can learn about the customer lifetime value. We can calculate the average uh, repurchase frequency and the repeat customer rate. We can learn about the product, which products are more trendy and which products are less trendy, which products are being acquired by new customers and which products are being acquired by repeat customers. We can learn about our customers. Where do they live? What do they buy? Who are the uh, top uh, customers? Who are the top AOV customers and top customer lifetime value customers? And enormous amount of data that we can learn from the first party data. And that data is, is a gold mine. And if we if we could leverage that data, it could be it could be enormous because that data is very special for three reasons actually. The first reason that's the most accurate data you'll ever find because it's your data, it's your customers' data, your product data, your orders data, and only only you have that data. So that's the most accurate data that we can use. Second point, it's the most extensive data. Because if we compare it to the pixel data, there's nothing to compare here. The, the pixel data lives for 30 days or so. Here we can use the entire historical data, all the customers, all the purchases, unlimited time, and, and leverage that. So it's much more extensive than the pixel data only. And the most important thing, Google and Facebook don't have the data simply because they're not connected to your store. So if they're not connected to your store, they cannot use the data. And if they cannot use the data, that's why we see uh, mediocre results. And that's why um, you cannot distinguish yourself from your competitors. But what if we can take the data and use that to make Google and Facebook more accurate with data that they don't have? That could be a game changer. The problem is that first party data is, is basically big data. And in order to in order to use the data smartly, in order to understand the real correlations between the things that really matter, in order not to use data that is not significant and by that you know make mistakes. In order to do that, we need we need some magic power that we will, will be able to analyze that and and and, and actually um, help us leverage that data into better performance. And for that, we need AI. And what is AI? First of all, AI, artificial intelligence, is an attempt of, of machines to simulate the human brain. Now, you may ask, why would a machine want to simulate a human brain? Doesn't make any sense. The answer for that is quite interesting. A human brain is, is, is actually quite amazing. We have about 100 billion neurons in our head, and the neurons are, are the ones that are making everything. They, they, they collect data, they process data by interacting with other neurons, and they generate every idea, every thought, every action that we make, and in fact, each and every neuron can interact with 200,000 other neurons, which means that the amount of junctions that we have in our head is greater than the entire stars in the galaxy. It's unbelievable. We say that neurons that wire together fire together and, and, and the speed, the speed of data transformation in our in our mind, in our head, in our brain, can reach up to 270 miles per hour or 430 kilometers per hour. It's faster than any Ferrari that I know. So the idea, the basic idea is the following. If we can use the first party data and simulate a human brain, but add to that, add to the human brain, the unlimited computing power, we can solve some big problems for the entire humanity, but, and even for, for, uh, for e-commerce advertising. So that's the idea behind the uh, artificial intelligence. And 
when it comes to advertising, which is not a huge problem of the humanity, but I guess it's a huge problem for many e-commerce advertisers, uh, we look at a process that is composed of actually four stages. And I will touch each one and each stage separately, but generally uh, we're talking about data training, connecting the AI into your store and analyzing the first party data, then generating segments, customer segments, product segments, then using what we've learned in stage one and two in the ads creation and use AI and generative AI to ease the ads creation and make it much more accurate. We want to use, we want to make super targeted uh, ads by using the first party data, which Google and Facebook don't have. And stage number four is to optimize it 24 seven with AI, just like having a, a department of 100, of 100 optimizers working all day and making sure that your campaigns are uh, upright and looking at the, uh, at the competition. So this is the process. And now let's just touch, touch it one by one. The first phase of, of data training is where we actually try to understand what are the insights that we can use out of the huge amount of raw first party data. And for that, we use BI, we use BI business intelligence, which is basically uh, an attempt to uh, understand which data can serve for the advertising process that is significant enough, that is usable, and that makes sense. Because when you when you have a lot of data, you can you can find also many things that doesn't make sense or might be changed in two weeks or just a just noise. So you look at the correlations and 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 basically the the module the the technology uh, extracts from the raw data the things that really really matter and things that you can use for for better advertising. Stage number two, which actually connects the AI to the BI, is the segmentation. What are segmentations? First of all, we have two types of segments. We have customer segments or audience segments, if you may, and product segments. So what are, uh, what are customer segments? Basically, it's people with similar uh, buying uh, patterns, similar purchasing behaviors, and it could be by any dimension. It could be that me as Mati, I'm a big ticket spender. I might buy uh, expensive products. And uh, Jonathan, you'll excuse me, I, I should have done it uh, vice versa, but maybe Jonathan is only buying with, with sales. So um, it doesn't make any sense to target us with the same offer. You want to sell me for uh, for higher price and you want to sell Jonathan uh, when you have a good sale. It will increase the likelihood to convert and it will increase the revenue. And just like that, we have many other dimensions that we can use. If Jonathan is buying his uh, pet food every three months, and I'm buying my um, uh, um, oil for the bicycle every six months, but we both are supposed to be buying this month because that's the repurchase frequency, we could be in the same segment of people that are likely to repurchase this month, even though we are totally different people and we are buying different things, but we have better likelihood to buy this month and you want to target us um, before your competitors will do. So the segmentation is, is, is super critical, super important, and that's the best way to um, uh, personalize the advertising and feed Google and Facebook with data that they don't have that will make them more accurate. Stage number three is the campaign creation. In the campaign creation, the idea is to take everything that we've learned in stage one and two and to inject it automatically into the campaign. So you don't get a situation where you have some data in one place and then you need to move the data to the second place and you need to maintain it. No, no, no. You want it to be seamless. And the AI campaign creation actually creates campaigns that are going to help your business thrive, that are going to move the needle. 
So for instance, if you need to generate more repeat customers, because that's what the data shows, more budget will be invested in repeat customers. If your problem is with new customers, it will be invested in new, new customers. If you need to uh, target a specific audience, it will be in the list and you will not target other audience that is less likely to convert and the same with products and the same with channels, etc., etc. So the idea is that everything that we've learned in stage one or two will be injected into the campaign creation and that the campaigns will be generated automatically or almost automatically for you with uh, with a simple wizard and with, uh, with, 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 with ease. You don't need to know much about Google and Facebook. Within the campaign creation stage, we have today technologies that allow us to also deal with the, with the soft skills needed. So for instance, uh, generating ad copy. I mean, in the past with ad scale, we've seen that people are, you know, generating copy when it took them like 30, 40 minutes. Today, you can do that with what? Two minutes. ChatGPT built in, tailored specifically for uh, advertising, all the policies of Google and Facebook are inside and you just press a button. And the same for video ads and the same for uh, image ads. So all the soft skills is something that you can generate. And then the last and the most important part is the automated optimization. Um, automated optimization means that you as customers, you only need to do two things define what is the uh, ad spend, what is the budget, and to define what is the realistic return on ad spend that you want to get. From there, the AI plays automatically. It plays offense, like offensive in good hours, defensive in the bad hours. It will tweak budgets between Google and Facebook. It will switch the bids. Remember, Google and Facebook, they have a walled garden between them. Google sees only Google. Facebook sees only Facebook. Both of them have the interest to maximize your spend and nobody cares about your specific interest. And in order to be able to optimize your campaigns, you need someone that sits on top of Google and Facebook and tweaks budget between Google and Facebook in the best hours for Google and vice versa uh, in order to maximize your revenue. And the technical way it's being done is quite interesting. Uh, I'm talking now about budget optimization. Basically, uh, this is not the same uh, AI as ChatGPT, which is a which is a lingual model. Here we're talking about mathematical AI, if you may, which means that uh, for each and every um, uh, campaign in Google, because that's where you define the budget, and each and every ad set in Facebook, because that's where you define the budget over there, uh, the AI generates a distribution. In the distribution, we have a summary of all the historical data, like how much budget we gave and how much revenue we got. And from there, the AI generates the regression line, which is the line with, which represents the minimum variance of all the options. This regression line enables us to predict. We can predict in a high level of certainty what will be the revenue for every given budget? And we can do that for every campaign and for every ad set, which means that we basically have a prediction of everything. And now we need to know what is the optimum of all the optimums. So um, that's something that is being done automatically with budget. And in a similar way, uh, also with bid optimization, and also um, with, with insights that helps you to structure the, uh, gives you, uh, gives you uh, tips that you can implement in one click that helps you to improve the structure of the campaigns, which is super important uh, as well. Um, so that's the uh, AI advertising uh, process in general. I will just repeat it. Training the data with first party data, Generating segments, AI generate the AI generate segments automatically. Create ads, and from there uh, uh, optimize the uh, the campaigns. Um, the benefits are quite clear. You get better targeting, 
you get uh, easy ad creation, and basically you get better, better results. Uh, I shouldn't keep this presentation too long. I'll just tell you about ad scale in, in a few seconds. Uh, we are an AI advertising system. Everything that you've seen, obviously, is something that we do in our system. Uh, the idea is to help merchants to get better results, to save uh, agency costs, and to get better uh, uh, return for the advertising spend. We serve thousands of customers worldwide. Um, and we have AdScale, and we have AdScale Managed, which is our managed solution for people that don't want to play on the system, but they want someone to do it for them. We have AdScale Managed as uh, well. So don't be late to the party. Uh, my name is Matty Ram. Should you have any questions, or if you want to learn more, just uh, write uh, my email, matty at adscale.com. We will also be sending you uh, a thank you uh, email so you can uh, write us back if, if you want to learn more. And thank you so much. I kept, I, prom I promised Jonathan I will keep it for up to 20 minutes. Jonathan, I believe I, 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 <laughs> I met my promise. I see that there are some uh, questions, but we will leave it to the general questions and answers uh, section after Sean's uh, presentation. Thank you so much for listening to my pitch and I will, I'm still here and I will answer the relevant questions uh, for me uh, in the third day section. Thank you, Mati. I uh, heard my name, so I jumped on. That's my cue. Uh, we'll talk about times after, but I think you did all right. And you know, you're also right that I like to buy things on sale. So uh, great talk as always. And even though I work here, I still have learn about the technology behind it. I just want to do a quick housekeeping note that we will be sending out a recording. There was a question for somebody who came late. We'll be sending out a recording tomorrow, um, so you don't need to worry about that. But having said that, uh, we still hope that you'll stick around, and we do have quite a few people. In addition, uh, you are welcome to ask a question at any time using the Q&A button. And as Mati mentioned, at the end, we'll uh, we'll be answering them. Now we'll go to Sean Finnegan from Hyperskew. I got the pronunciation right this time. And uh, we'll hear about sourcing and fulfillment. Uh, Sean, take it away. Great, thank you, Jonathan. Jonathan, can you enable um, screen sharing for me as presenter? Yeah, absolutely, sorry about that. Thank you. John, I think you need to press the share screen button in the button. Yeah, it's um, it's just saying it's disabled mm -hmm. for okay. screen share. I need to make you a co-host. Yep. Just a second. Sorry for that. My bad. Okay. How do I do that? How do I do that? Here it comes. Okay, you should be able to do that now. Perfect. I think we are we are good. This presenter All right. Well, Jonathan and Mati, I, I definitely appreciate you guys uh, inviting me to the to the webinar today. So uh, again, my name is Sean Finnegan. I'm Vice President of Business Development and Strategy at Hyperskew. And Hyperskew, so what we are, we're a, um, a supply chain solution founded in 2018. Uh, we provide a very streamlined sourcing and logistics solution for e-commerce sellers, brands, and now as well as um, boutiques and the creator community as well. Um, so we, as you can see, you know, places that we've worked and the leadership the, uh, team that has been built here, we've incorporated many years of experience, resources, and then of course technology to deliver a platform that is free to use for folks to begin their sourcing adventures or you know, move over to Hyperskew if they're looking for a very streamlined solution. Um, we currently support thousands of sellers and entrepreneurs uh, across the globe. 
So a little bit more about what we do and, and I'll go through a bit about HyperSKU and then kind of jump into the sourcing and fulfillment uh, preparations for Q4, because I know that's that's why you're all here. Uh, so so HyperSKU is dropship and, and bulk order sourcing. So we really focus on niche verticals. So anything from women's fashion, consumer electronics, pet supplies, kitchen, um, we give you that convenience to be able to build your brands and your stores with the things um, that you may need and that you may feel you you have built a good niche in, whether that's on you know, Amazon and marketplaces or through Shopify and web stores. Um, and we are also a Shopify um, certified partner and have a, our app in the store there. So we're connected with thousands of factories uh, within China. And we can help you, you know, manage all of the sourcing and, you know, all the process and things that go along with it, as well as fulfilling, you know, your white label initiatives and private label products as well. Um, we we have a competitive advantage over others, and a, a real big value prop of ours is not having uh, MOQs with certain products. Um, we definitely give you so many options in terms of shipping. Uh, across the globe, really. So I think we're over, well over 72 countries now in which we can ship to with either bulk orders or drop shipping orders uh, directly to your customers. So with the drop shipping and fulfillment solutions, you know, after your customer places an order, all you really need to do is, is pay for that. And that's all done within the free, free platform that we've created. Um, you can easily fulfill up to 100 orders a day per click. Um, we can support up to thousands of orders today, depending on how big your store is. Um, we do the purchasing, the negotiating, the picking and packing, and then the shipping out of all those parcels um, with a number of shipping options that you can choose, uh, whether you're in the U.S., um, South America or Europe. Uh, and we're, we're consistently cutting down that handling time and that uh, lead time to different countries. So. Uh, the U.S., for example, I know is around five to 10 days and pretty much always within that seven to, to 12 day time frame. So very advantageous in terms of getting products to your customers in a timely manner. And we support all of that with um, automation and tracking. So you will always know where your orders are, what the delivery rates are. Uh, we have our own global address validation and things like that to, to support all of those logistics needs. And those are all automatically synced to your e-commerce store. So for example, if you're using Shopify, it is a very simple flow. Um, once you connect to us to have those orders come into your store, flow to HyperSKU. And then the, once we fulfill that order, that tracking and logistics information will flow right back out to your store uh, and to your customers with alerts. Uh, and that's especially critical, as you know, during Q4, where you know, every minute counts and the customers are always trying to understand where their package is. Um, a, a service and the automation that we have around tracking is, is super important um, when you're working in the holiday season and you have those Wismos uh, coming through. So where's my customer, where's my order, right? Um, constantly getting those emails. So this gives that transparency to those customers. And then beyond that, um, we also have a, a great deal of post-sale support. So, you know, you you as a seller or entrepreneur want to understand, you know, if there is an issue with a specific order, how is HyperSkew going to support you on the back end? So we have a dedicated team that speaks, I think, over seven languages now that can support you with customer service issues to understand, okay, was this product effective? Was it lost with one of the logistics partners? Um, any sort of issues like that, we are really all hands on deck and you get that support that you need and expect um, from, a, from a company like us and providing these types of services. So it helps you, you know, decrease any dispute rates you may have with um, Amazon or Shopify. And ultimately, it, you know, includes that improves your customer satisfaction uh, across the board there. So at the end of the day, the customers are the most important thing that are running your business and running ours. So making them happy is, is critical, especially during the holiday season. You know, and then beyond those, you know, core services that we offer, it we also get into um, a lot of branding services. So, you know, besides just sourcing from us and having us handle all that legwork, if you need things branded, if you need, you know, custom boxes, custom labels on the apparel, 
all those types of things. We have all those services as well. And um, it allows you to, to really have your brand stand out, give you a number of marketing um, tools in your toolbox to be able to create that brand um, and become the entrepreneur that you're looking to be. So now that I told you a little bit about HyperSkew, I'd like to get into you know, Q4 and holiday planning and for sourcing and fulfillment. So I decided to, to break this down um, in you know, four components for, for each sourcing and fulfillment. So with sourcing, you know, you're consistently needing to prepare your efforts for Q4, and it requires uh, more than anything planning and a proactive measures to really ensure a successful season. So the first, I think, key point there to, to call out is analyzing uh, data. So what you would do there is understand and review your past performance from previous Q4 periods, um, Black Friday, Cyber, Cyber Monday, and then even the previous weeks and months. Um, if you're selling trending products or if you hit some products that are, are going viral, you wanna understand all of that data on your back end. Look at the sales that are coming from Shopify. Look at what you may have been ordering for hype from HyperSKU or another supplier. Um, and then identify those products, understand the peak demand periods that you may be facing in Q4 and what those customer preferences are. So this analysis can really guide your sourcing decisions going forward and help you focus on the products that have historically performed well. So it's a look back at analyzing that data and understanding what you're going to be selling um, in the Q4 holiday season. Mm -hmm. To assess is I think the second key thing there. So forecast your expected sales, um, do as much forecasting as you can and analyze your current inventory levels. So understand what you have in stock, what you may have coming in your supply chain, and then what you still need may need to stock more of for the Q4 season. So as you went in the first step and analyzed, you know, what you sold last year, what you sold in the previous three to four months, now you can assess your inventory needs and make sure that you're you're bringing that stuff in if you don't have it in already, um, since we're, you know, we're already getting into mid-September, right? Um, so forecast your expected sales, analyze your current inventory levels, determine if you have sufficient stock to meet the anticipated demand that you've um, thought about for Q4 and forecasted. And then if necessary, consider adjusting your inventory levels by sourcing additional stock from suppliers, from HyperSKU, or expanding your product range to cater to that seasonal demand. Um, obviously Christmas, uh, the, the holidays season, it's gonna be more gift type items, more toys, things like that. So keep that in mind as you're, you're working towards your stocking and sourcing. And then communication, I, I can't stress this one enough, whether it's you know, communicating internally with you know, what your SOPs are, wh with your employees, what your processes are gonna be for the holiday season. Um, establish clear communication with your suppliers as well and share your forecasts and expectations with, with them. So I know that with our customers, we love to understand, you know, what are they looking at or what are they thinking of selling in Q4? What is their anticipated demand? What do the forecasts look like? Because us as HyperSKU, we want to make sure that we have that stuff in stock um, or if we can get that stuff from our manufacturers to make sure that we're supplying you as the brand or the seller, the entrepreneur, so you can keep your customers happy. So really big thing here is establish that clear communication channels with suppliers, um, share your forecasts and expectations. This helps you know, folks like us prepare and manage production schedules. It ensures that we can meet your demands during the busy season. Um, regular communication, it also, is, it also just fosters stronger relationships with, whoops, with the suppliers um, and even allows you to expand your, your product range. And then the last point here is, is monitoring. So monitor that demand as you get into Q4, see what starts selling in October, early to mid-October. That's gonna give you a pretty good you know, preview of what is to come potentially. Uh, understand the customer feedback that may be coming. And then of course, monitor your partners as well. Monitor the supplier performance, monitor HyperSKU, other suppliers and understand how they are doing. Make sure that constant communication is, is in place with them. 
Um, so keep in mind to, to track that to the demand patterns, feedback from customers and supplier performance. You really wanna stay agile and be ready to make adjustments in your sourcing strategy if needed during this time, um, because it's still a bit early in Q4 in, in early October, mid-October. This could really improve uh, ordering additional stock you know, for faster selling items or even pivoting to alternate products if certain items are not really performing as expected. Um, so once again, these, these key points here in terms of sourcing is analyze, assess, communicate, and monitor. So jumping into the, you know, what I think are the four key points for fulfillment. So it's all about preparation again. So preparing your fulfillment efforts for Q4, it's, it's essential to accommodate the increased order volumes for peak and ensure that deliveries and that communication is there with your customers and all of your partners and suppliers. So number one, it's, it's to optimize, right? So resolve the bottlenecks you may have found in your supply chain in you know, working with customers and communication, those types of things and, and streamline all of your processes and SOPs. This could include uh, you know, reviewing picking, packing and shipping procedures if you have your own fulfillment, um, as well as evaluating your packaging materials and labeling system. And if you outsource those things to you know, someone like Hyperskew or some other providers, make sure you're working with them on, on understanding if, okay, is the packaging right? Is a specific box size out of stock and you need to switch to something else? You know, Talk to the suppliers, understand what is the most cost-effective solution for you. So you can't, it's never too early to start optimizing those processes so that as you get into mid-October and then early November, you have all those things in place to continue um, seeing things flow throughout Q4. Planning is, you know, that's such a big one next to communication. So work with the suppliers to ensure the inventory needs are met and avoid stock out. So again, analyze historical sales data and market trends to forecast a demand in Q4. Use this information to plan and stock your inventory as strategically as you can and work with those suppliers to ensure that they can meet your inventory needs because the last thing you want to do is start having a ton of stock outs during Q4. It just, it makes for a bad experience for the customers and, and ultimately for your, your brand or store. Preparing is key. So prepare for, you know, appropriate staffing through January. And I say January because you get into a lot of customer service type things. So think of return season, if folks you know, have stuff that they're not happy with as a gift, they wanna exchange it or they wanna return it um, for something else, expect a lot of those things to come in January. So don't just think about staffing as prepping you know, for fulfillment during Q4, think about those types of things for Q1 as well, especially in January. So understand the staffing needs based on your projected order volumes in Q4. And then hire additional temp help or seasonal staff as you feel is needed. And not only that, but ensure they're, they're properly trained on all of your fulfillment processes to maintain efficiency and accuracy. So even if you have a small staff and you're outsourcing all of the fulfillment to uh, you know, someone like Hyperskew or some other providers, and you have a small internal staff, it's, it's that much more critical, right? It doesn't mean it's hands off for you but it still means you need to prepare the folks that you do have um, in case someone's out sick or you know, people are on vacation, those types of things. Everybody plays a critical role in Q4. So when it comes to fulfillment um, and just procedures across the board, that preparation with the staffing is, is very, very critical. It can really make or break a customer experience during holiday time. And finally, uh, for fulfillment, look at doing testing. So test all your systems and processes to ensure that you can meet that peak season to demand. So as much as you can prior to Q4, conduct testing on you know, everything from your website to making sure that orders are flowing from Shopify to Hyperskew uh, and, and the tracking is going back and forth. Test all of those systems once, twice, three times to ensure that they can handle mm -hmm. A, a big surge in traffic, a big surge in transactions, and a big surge in order volume. If because if you can identify and address any performance issues, you know, in August and September, 
or scalability issues, uh, you're going to maintain a seamless customer experience. Um, and that's could be the determining factor if they're going to come back to you next season for, for purchasing during the holiday. So then in summary, I wanted to provide you, I think, with which is what a good checklist is for you guys to, you know, prepare the planning, the execution, and then post Q4. So, you know, when you're thinking about the planning, again, review the past performance and lessons learned from previous holiday seasons. Make sure you don't repeat them if they're mistakes. Resource plan your staffing levels and review and update all your SOPs so that everybody's on the same page when volume hits peak levels. Work with existing suppliers to ensure you have appropriate inventory levels and get you through the holiday season. And then in execution, so when you're in the thick of it in Q4, as you get into November, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, um, make sure all that testing and monitoring the systems are working. Uh, make sure they're, they're functioning efficiently. Maintain that constant communication with your suppliers, your logistics partners, and more importantly, your customers as those orders are flowing. If there's issues during that time, you want to resolve them as quickly as possible. And you know, if you're working with a sourcing partner like Hyperskew, we are you know staffed at peak levels at that time, so we're making sure that communication is constantly flowing with us, and we're getting back to you as quickly as possible if there is any issues with an order or if you need to restock something, anything like that. Um, and then last in the execution phase, you know, if you need to adjust forecasts during Q4, it's, it's okay to do that. You're not always going to be 100% accurate in terms of what you're selling or what you need in stock or what you need to reorder. It's okay to adjust on the fly. It's better to do that than to just leave it and kind of see what happens. Um, so adjust everything from your forecasts, your campaigns, uh, and even down to your staffing needs as needed throughout that season. And then with post Q4, so have a really clear picture of any and all customer inquiries. So know, you know, what happened, do a, do a post, do a look back of what went on in October, November, December, look at the customer issues that may be there, look at how many returns and exchanges you may have to handle. Um, make sure you have the staffing and the support in place to do that. And then again, work with your partners like Hyperskew to understand how we can support you guys from you know, not only a logistics and fulfillment perspective, but also our, our expertise and our knowledge in the industry. Maintain that communication with your customers on all post-sale activities, as well as post-sale ho post -sale, um, holiday sales, right? So they may be, you know, they may have gotten something for Christmas and said, gosh, you know, showed this to someone else and they would like to purchase the same thing. So always think about what you could be restocking in January, because if folks are coming back and, you know, wanting to get one of those trending products, it's always advantageous to have, you know, a bit of stock left over um, so those folks can purchase it. And then work diligently to restock those and then prep for the remainder of Q1 and preparing for spring. So I think, you know, following the steps I laid out for the sourcing and fulfillment, and then uh, in the summary checklist, I think you can definitely prepare your fulfillment efforts in Q4 for e-commerce. You can optimize your processes. You can have proper inventory planning, um, if very effective partnerships, and then, you know, a huge focus on that customer service. It's all going to ensure a, a very successful order fulfillment and customer satisfaction um, during the busy holiday season. So best of luck in selling and uh, Hyperskew is here to support you. Thank you. And thank you, Sean. It's, uh, very interesting uh, uh, explanations about how to keep stocks up during the, the peak period and, and how to make sure that everything stays as smooth as it can when there's uh, buckets full, bucket fulls of sales. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so if you can uh, turn off your screen share, Mati, you can join back in. We'll uh, get to some of the questions that were asked during the uh, period of this webinar. So we'll start with a an ad scale question came in for Mati. Uh, can you use funnel-based strategies for e-commerce websites? Yes, definitely. I mean, uh... Basically, we divide the uh, funnel into three stages, like the upper funnel, which is the awareness stage, middle funnel, which is the consideration stage, and the acquisition stage. 
And we can also divide it into three other stages of, you know, um, acquisition, remarketing, and retention. Uh, generally, the goal in each and every stage is different. So usually with awareness, you try to maximize the uh, impressions. And by that, to, you know, attract more customers. And then in the uh, consideration level, you can define exactly what is the goal that you want to maximize in the budget. And then you bring them into the acquisition. So we can definitely do that. And it's part of the uh, audience selection phase because when you define the audiences, one of the ideas is also to acquire new customers that are similar to your top customers or acquire new customers that are similar to the customers who are buying a product you want to promote. And having the three um, stages in the funnel uh, makes a lot of sense, definitely. Okay, great. And uh, Sean, we have a question with regards to drop shipping for a company that's located in the US, uh, tracking information being provided to the customer, what sort of information can they glean about uh, where the product is coming from versus where the company is located? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's typically, you know, after we we bring the stuff in from China, the order, it's, it's going to be established with usually a local tracking number so that the customer has that information throughout the whole cycle. Um, so they're going to see where it is once it hits the US and then throughout you know, it's, it's journey even down to the final mile. Um, so we ensure through our platform that they get as, as many insights and, and tracking points as they can to know where that is. Okay, great. Um, for Mati, I guess we'll do a little back and forth and we're still getting questions in. You guys are welcome to ask. We do have a bit of time left. Um, Mati, for a new store without much data, uh, is Axel a good solution? If you don't have data, we cannot use the first party data. Uh, so it will not help you with the data point of view. It will help you with the ease of use. So it will be much easier to, uh, you know, uh, generate campaigns with uh, Google, with Axel than with Google and Facebook, but you're not going to enjoy the first party data uh, advantage, which is the, the main advantage. So if it's a new shop, with no data, I always recommend to start getting customers without advertising, gather some data, and then use the advertising arm. Okay, great. And Sean, a uh, question regarding uh, how HyperSkew compares with the Ali's, AliExpress and Alibaba. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in a number of ways, I would say we are we are very much um, a hands-on and and dedicated support type company. So we we really focused on the client uh, experience to ensure that their your customers are getting the best experience. So the the support level is you know giving you a dedicated agent to work with to source those items that you're looking for to make sure we're doing the quality control for you to to make sure those products are or up to what you want, to what you're looking for. Um, and you don't always get those types of services with Alibaba, AliExpress. Um, so it's think of more, it's more of a concierge um, hands-on approach um, dedicated to those clients and, and consumers. Um, and then when it comes to the tracking and the logistics, so we've, we've built out an extensive logistics partner network to where we're giving very visible tracking events to our clients and to the end consumer, where you don't necessarily always get that with AliExpress and Alibaba. Uh, and then we're always ensuring that we're meeting very, very strict um, metrics in terms of on-time delivery, making sure delivery confirmation is there as well. Um, and then if you think about it, like those those entities are so big, Alibaba and Express, you know, and, and they do have their benefits. That that's for sure. Um, but with Hyperskew, you're you're working with the same team all the time, so you get that dedicated support and help. And you know, you, if you think about, it, you know, you place orders every two months, every three months, you're coming back to the same folks. You're coming back to the a company that you know and that you've been working with and established a relationship with. So we we love to make sure we're, we're building bonds and relationships with our clients to support their customers. 
Um, and that's not always something you can get from other providers. And, and we strive to really um, beat them in, in that aspect. Yeah, it's a great differentiating uh, factor between you and some of the, the, the competitors that are out there. Uh, we've got a question for Mati about uh, ad, uh, tips to optimize ad strategies for Q4. Obviously, there are some peak periods and some less peak periods. Uh, how how long does ad scale take to uh, uh, to give you positive performance? And also, general questions about uh, the strategy overall for this period. So you asked me three questions. I can barely remember one. I'll start with the first one, and then you guide me through. Let's start with the Q4 specific um, uh, tips. Uh, first of all, I think that it's important to um, realize that uh, um, th there are peak periods and, and normal periods, and and the budget utilization could not be the same. We need to keep the budget for the peak period and over there to multiple the budget by two, three, or four. And in the less important days to cut it by half or even more and not get it into the situation where we are not left with enough budget for the uh, for the peak days because that's not gonna be uh, uh, good. Um, I believe, uh, stro I strongly believe that we need to look at the um, segments of people that we wish to uh, target. Like uh, for instance, uh, if we look at the repeat customers, just to give some samples, we can target the likely to repurchase segment, which are people that have the likelihood, the, the highest likelihood to buy this month. We can target the big ticket spenders. It's always a good uh, uh, a segment that helps to increase the average AOV. So if you if you if you sell with lower prices because you're doing a sale in in the uh, in the uh, holidays period you can balance it to some extent by, you know, bringing more big ticket spenders. And, and big ticket spenders is something that you can sell to your existing big ticket spenders, but you can also look alike that segment and try and get more, more of those from, a, from a Shopify. Uh, we always recommend to look at the people who bought in the last uh, season. Sometimes people only buy on these special occasions, so it is uh, recommended to do that as well. Another interesting tip is to think about your loyal customers. I will explain that. The, the holidays period is the most important period to uh, attract new customers and then to come back to them all over the year. It's just that it's a zero-sum game. So if a customer buys, he either buys from us or from our competitors. So everybody is trying to, uh, you know, get new customers that used to buy with their competitors. But in many cases, they forget to protect their own existing customers. So our recommendation is to look at the loyal customer segment and offer these people substantial uh, uh, value, substantial deals in order to preserve them and avoid them start buying with other shops. Uh, in terms of uh, a tactique, we, we have a tactique, we call it the, the, the long tail tactique, which we see that uh, people are buying uh, sometimes before the peak season starts or the peak period starts. And when I speak about the peak period, for instance, Black Monday, Cyber Ma Black Friday, Cyber Monday, it's about three, four days of peak. But some people buy a bit before and some people buy a bit later. So you can have a tactic of, you know, generating an expectation. Big sale is coming, wait, uh, 40 hours, 48 hours le only left, 24 hours left, and then start earlier. Give a substantial uh, incentive and start earlier start eight hours before, 24 hours before, and get the early buyers uh, faster than anyone else. And then also finish afterwards. So you can send them like, you know, uh, reminders of four hours left, two hours left. And then when the gong came, you send another email and you say, due to the uh, huge uh, demand, we extend it in 48 hours or 24 hours. So 
use the, uh, the, the long tail and increase the long tail in order to um, generate the revenue. Now, specific tips. Uh, in Facebook, I re recommend to generate new ads in existing campaigns. Because if you have campaigns and you have some credit, you don't want to create new campaigns and have them being uh, in learning mode or limited learning and, and you lose the entire time. So stop your existing ads, generate new ads in existing campaigns, add a relevant copy and creative, that, uh, that, should, that should work. When it comes to Google, I recommend in search to add the relevant keywords for the brand keyword. So if my brand keyword is Matty, it will be Matty plus Cyber Monday, Matty plus Black Friday, Matty plus Black Friday sale. So add the relevant keywords to the brand and the non-brand keywords. And also to add the relevant Black Friday or Cyber Monday category for the PMAX or shopping campaigns. So distinguish them from the relevant uh, campaigns and uh, choose your products carefully. Don't let the budget be wasted on, on products with less likelihood or less competitive or when you have a, a not, not, not such a great offer. Focus on the things that are really uh, going to move the needle. Nail down the product to what could really work and don't try to sell everything. That's that's a huge mistake because there will be no much competition over there. The budget will go there because it's good for Google or for Facebook and you'll be losing uh, the timing. So uh, um, in a nutshell, that, that's my uh, uh, recommendation or like some tips for the, uh, for the, uh, for the period. What was the other last uh, questions? I, I, for, I, I promised you I will forget and I did so. So. Uh, I think you uh, you covered it all there. Okay, great. Okay, so I think we're uh, just about coming up on our time. I do want to thank again, uh, Mati from AdScale and Sean from Hyperskew for joining us today, uh, sharing some, some good insight right before the Q4 rush. Uh, I hope that everybody found this uh, as informative as I did. As a reminder, we'll be sending out a recording tomorrow. And uh, thanks again for coming. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Sean.